Oops. Good afternoon, students. Welcome, students. I'm Mr. Boscarini. And for our unit on forces and motion, today's lesson will be about distance time graphs. So far, we've seen how to uh, calculate the motion of an object. We've seen how to find the speed of an object. We've seen how to find its acceleration. Today we're going to introduce a new way to see the motion of an object, actually to represent it. We're going to introduce motion graphs and we're going to start with a simpler type of motion graphs, distance time graphs. In any type of motion graph, we will always put the time on the horizontal or x-axis and in the case of distance time graph, we'll put distance on the vertical or y-axis. Today we're going to see how we can uh, represent different types of motion in a distance time graph and we'll start with a simple type of motion actually what happens if an object is not moving at all. Now when an object is not moving it means that the distance, the position of that object is not changing over time. So if we represent it on a distance time graph the uh, graph for uh, such an object will be a flat line, like this one. So a flat line in a distance time graph represents an object which is not moving, or as we can say, has speed equal to zero. What if the object is actually moving? Now, let's imagine that we have an object that moves at a constant speed. What is the meaning of constant speed? Constant speed means that in the same amount of time, the object is moving by the same amount of distance. So let's see, for instance, the object which is, whose movement is represented by these red dots. After one unit of time, it moved one unit of distance. After two units of time, it has moved two units of distance, after three units of time, after four, and so on. So it's not difficult to understand that an object that moves at a constant speed in a distance time graph will have, will be represented by a straight line, like this one. The same applies to this other green line. Again, here we have an object that moves at a constant speed. So what's the difference between this green line and the red line? The difference is in the slope. But what does it mean from the point of view of movement? So let's see, for instance, at a given time, like here. At this moment, this object here has moved of this distance. The object represented by the green line, on the other hand, The object represented by the green line, on the other hand, has moved a bigger distance. So it's clear to understand that this object is going at a greater speed, so it's going faster than this one. In general, it's easy to understand that the bigger the slope, the higher the speed of an object. If you, if you think back about the object which was not moving, it was represented by a line, a line which was flat, with zero slope, which corresponded to zero speed. As you increase the speed, so will the slope. How about an object with a negative slope? In this case, you can see the distance is decreasing over time. As we say, this object has, again, a constant, but a negative speed, a constant negative speed. Finally, an object 
that has a speed which is not constant, not uniform, will be represented in a distance time graph by a curve. And here, again, you can see that uh, the slope of this thing is increasing and this is related to acceleration, so a change of speed. When an object changes speed, the, the line is actually a curve in a distance time graph. But a distance time graph can tell us more. And for this, we have to remember something from algebra. If you have a line, the slope of that line is, got, is given by the rise over the run. So how much the line goes up over how much it goes across. Rise over run. But in a distance time graph, the rise is the distance. And the run is the time. We already found a formula which was given by distance over time. But it was speed. So, in the distance time graph, the slope of the line is actually the value of the speed. So from a distance time graph, we can find the distance traveled by an object, we can find the time it took for that object to travel, but we can also calculate the speed by looking at the slope of a line. So what was the learning goal of this lesson? By the end of this lesson, you should be able to represent the motion of an object using a distance time graph. In the same way, you should be able to recognize the type of motion of an object by looking at a distance time graph. So, making time graph, uh, distance time graph and reading uh, distance time graph. In the next lesson, we're going to see the other type of motion graph, speed time graphs, and finally we're going to see how we can record the motion of an object, so how we can directly find the speed of an object moving.